Thanks everybody for, for making it uh, today. And um, you know, we took a little bit of a break last week. We were, you know, we felt like we were we were putting a lot of content out, out there, but want want to kind of maybe have a little more appropriate breaks because I know a lot of there's a lot of resources and sources for content for uh, high school and youth coaches now. And so, you know, maybe doing it less frequently, a little bit more specific topics see how all the topics kind of weave together. If you're, if you're following our playlist on YouTube, you know, from a defensive standpoint, kind of working a lot on kind of footwork and on ball and off ball, you know, really kind of micro elements. And that's the way I like to coach. I think it, I think it fits well with, you know, with high school and youth, youth coaches because there's a real tendency to get to kind of the big picture things, but when you're looking at a preseason or getting ready for a summer season or doing off-season things, everybody wants to play and everybody wants to do the small group stuff that has a lot of energy, but you can't avoid the, the little things. So uh, today, kind of be going to be focusing on, you know, approaches uh, from an off-ball position and then your departure from leaving the ball to, so you can get to your off-ball Role. So I call them entries and exits, you know, approaches and recoveries, whatever the terminology that, that you use, uh, I think can be really helpful. And it'll hopefully give you some new terms, maybe a new way of, of looking at film, because we all have plenty of time to watch our, our teams right now, that I think there's real value in not just sending these big clips to your your own team and your own players, but maybe finding little things for each guy. And I know Coach Bergman, who's on the uh, webinar with us right now, he's kind of my, my right arm. I can talk to him and say, hey, let's find these little pieces of defensive situations that just took place, find the clips, and then we find the clips, we do the teaching via huddle or whatever software you might use. And then on top of that, we put the drill. So, you know, how we're sharing this information and trying to teach you all is the same way that we, that I did in my previous stop at Notre Dame and the way I have started to doing at Harvard. So why don't we go to a couple of clips and then we'll end with a, with a two clips of a drill. And then probably later this week, we'll post a video, a better kind of setup that'll allow you to tie it all together. But we'll tie it all together for you today. So let's go to the videotape. If we could if find we the videotape. Find the videotape. It's uh, right there. There we go. All right. Okay. There we go. All right. I got to move these guys out of the way here. And uh, move this over. Oh, the next one right here. Uh, what's that? Hit that one right there. This one? To the left. What? Okay. There we go. And here we go. So. We have a, uh, this is from, I think, probably last September. We just, you know, it was one of our first practices, but we were, we were putting in our defense and, and really focusing on, you know, my belief that really good team defense is, is all seven of those players, the goalie and the six defenders working together. And it's not typically anything very sexy. And it's, it's really about efficient foot movement and great stance and great exits, and you know when you're guarding someone, getting at least one piece of him. So kind of try to have really narrow expectations about on-ball and off-ball defense, that they're high bars, but they're really clear, and I think they're really simple. And I think it, it gives a level, you know, for the guys that I've coached, I think it gives them a level of embracing what's expected of them, a real clarity between what's good and not good enough, and great, and also how all six guys kind of integrate together to help play really good team defense. So that's kind of the broad kind of big picture mentality. And then when you start cutting film and you start looking at good and bad within a six yard movement, now guys start really being able to understand, wow, that little pivot or that little drop step or that little head turn, that's really the difference here. And you're like, yeah, that really is the difference. So, Let's watch this first, uh, this first clip. So the ball's swinging, and 
you know, this is a seven yard approach. And what I want you to kind of focus on is, is you can see, you know, you know, it's easy to, um, where's my, uh, uh, it's gonna be, you gotta click on, oh, okay, oh, there it is. Um, <clears throat> So, you know, a lot of times you want to focus on this guy, and we will. You know, he's got a, uh, a seven-yard approach. We like to talk about that being a two-part two approach, that this might be the first part, and then the last part here. So here's the first part, and then the second part, and then hopefully you're getting some sort of contact right around here. But, you know, everybody is entering and exiting right now. The ball's in the air. You can see the ball in the air from this player to him. So, you know, here's his exit, right? Here's his entry, right? You got, you know, his exit from his man up into the crease, his sideways stance here, his sideways stance here. And depending on how you play defense, you can either have, you know, this guy as your slide man right now, or this guy is your slide man right now. So I think, you know, one of the things that you want to practice when you're coaching defense in small groups or big groups is, is there clarity of roles? Is it, is it communicated? And then what are your rules if the shape changes or the angle of the dodge changes or that the guy gets beat quickly or if the guy gets beat slowly? So that's all going to be really specific and customized to you, but when, when you when I think about exits and entries, you know, I'm exiting an off ball to guard the ball. I was just on the ball and now I'm exiting and entering my off ball role. And like practicing that exits and entries, whether you just have three guys standing around the perimeter and the ball moves and you've got to make an approach and then they have to leave, something simple as that is gonna teach your guys how to make an approach and then how to leave. Where should the head of my stick be? Where should my hips be? How do I make an approach? How long is my approach? Where are my hands? You know, some, some guys are teaching, and again, I'm, you know, I'm not to be on here, you know, critiquing the way someone else, but some people teach more of a channeling mentality. Meaning, how do I do this one? Is uh, some teach more of a channeling mentality where they're gonna pick up the ball right, and, and be kind of perpendicular to the end line and let the guy go this way because that gives a predictability of a slide angle, but you lose ball pressure. You know, I'm more of a, I would like to challenge and where you lose some of the predictability on which way the guy's go, going to go, but you gain ball pressure. And so ball pressure being really critical, I think, to anybody else's decision you know, but you can do it either way. There's a predictability if you channel, like don't let the guy to the middle of the field, right? But by not letting a guy to the little middle of the field, you might give him a straight run down the alley. So there's trade-offs and to each his own on that. But what I like about this picture right in this moment is you can see the first part of his approach, the first part of his exit, and then you're gonna see the second part of his exit. You'll see in the first part of his exit, and the second part of his entry into the crease. You can see his stance right here. You know, I see my man, I see the ball. You got this guy who's, you know, inside out on his man and we're a crease sliding team. And so he's, he's starting to, to determine whether he's gonna have to, you know, is this dodge gonna go to the middle of the field and I have to go there or will I have to go here? Which gives you, man, because everybody here is trying to get their exit and their entry optimal, you're seeing a lot of chess, which is great. And you're seeing a lot of heads pivoting and swiveling. You're seeing what I like to see is this guy right here outworking him and this guy outworking him and him outworking him. All of those things aggregate and up together to help you play really good defense, right? So here comes this approach, first part. This is the end of the first part. And here's the start of the second part. And you can see his feet chop and his hands are in a really good spot. One of the things that probably that we had to work on the most with our short stick D middies when they were making their approaches, when they were making their exit 
from an off ball role and go into guard somebody is that they did everything right and their hands dropped. So when you're watching film of your guys, I like to have my guys, you know, I tell them they should be able to, you know, touch their chest or their nipples right here. Even though they never do it, I know it's going to be a little bit lower. And I want them in really violent hand positions where I can punch with my top hand, cross check with both hands, drive with my butt end, lift if I have to, wrap if I can. So that this is a really good approach. Let's let's watch that again because I think it's it's worth watching. And I like how he swings around. When you talk about like Talk about this. Watch that guy who circles. He swings around, finds his man, and it allows him to have a really good approach. Right? His hands are up. Right? They drop a little bit. But now he's able to get that first piece. And the first piece allows you to potentially get a second piece. No pieces, you're, you got straight, got run by. And, and what, what you're seeing now is because we had good exits from everywhere else. Remember, this guy threw the ball to this guy. And now I think this guy right here, our defender right here, as I like to say, he's doing more than one thing. He knows where his guy is, because you can see him sneaking a peek here. He's looking right at him. And, and he can support here. So that, you know, whether, whether you call that good spacing or not, or just, you know, this, the guy circled out working him, I think that's great. You're seeing great stance with a guy ready to exit right here. He's in the lane right? And seeing his man at the same time. And we don't know whether this is going to be a pick. Is this guy going to pick? Is he going to pop? You don't know. He's in a great stance. They're all dragging their sticks toward their guys too, which is great, right? He's in a nice sideways stance, right? And looking back at his man, you know, he's up in here supporting. So you had, because you had good entries into your off ball, and the only way you have a good entry in your off ball is means you have a good exit from your man and you have the chance to get ball pressure right here. You get that one piece. So you can see how all the things kind of integrate together. This, this is actually going to be a good cut right here by this guy. And he makes himself a threat as this guy tries to help up from an offensive standpoint. So you get a piece and now, you know, again, the way we play defense is – there's not going to always be clarity on who the slide guy is. You could go from this guy, and maybe he goes, or maybe he continues to pivot and he goes from here, or you could go from, from this guy. That's going to be situational, driven by ball pressure, driven by how quickly somebody gets beat, driven by communication, driven by the shape, or maybe the pressure and the skill of your opponent. So. One of, the, one of the things is there's not always going to be a clarity from, from the viewer's standpoint. Within your defense, there's clarity, right? So you're seeing a lot of sideways and chest right now, which is a great thing. Sideways stance, so important when you're coaching, when you're coaching defense, right? And now you have the chance to give the appearance that you have two people ready to slide. And if you're this dodger, that might be enough to cause him to, you know, pull out of his dodge or maybe not dodge with the same – intensity or, or confidence because he's worried about getting slid to. So I like the stance. I like the exits. I like the entries. I like how they're creating, and I know it's an old term, but it's still valuable, ball, you, man, triangle. So I like this right here. Here's the ball. Here's the ball. Here's the ball right here. Right. Here's his man, and here's you. Right, and again, it's an old term, but it works. Ball you man triangle, and the only way you can do the ball you man triangle really well is exit and entry really, exit and enter really well, and do the footwork and the orientation of your body as your man moves and as the dodger moves. That's the only way you can do this triangle well. Same thing with him. You know, this the guy who's in the lower position. Ball, here's the ball, here's you, and here's your man, triangle, All right? We got that triangle, here's got this guy, ball, here's you, 
And this guy's in, in a couple of different, he's in two different triangles. So he's got this triangle. And then he also has a little bit of this triangle because he's supporting that. Right, so you can see all those triangles makes a nice little couple of slices of pizza, which makes me hungry for some Long Island pizza right now, but I, I digress. So, uh, so then you can see it all in action right there. So now here, now we got a potential new slide guy. He's starting to, and he's staying in that sideways stance. The sideways stance allows you to, to go if you have to go, stay if you wanna stay, while seeing the dodge in your man at the same time. His head, as his head swivels, he can see both of those guys. So critical. I think you can see, see that there. And that becomes true of everybody else. You can see all the triangles right now that the different responsibilities guys. And again, this is not perfect. What, I'd what I would love to see more of is this guy right here helping here so he doesn't have that pull all the way in. Because if you get here, you're gonna be vulnerable to skips. Everybody see that? They can skip here, they can skip there. So what I would rather see is maybe this guy pulling down a little bit more and not have to respond to him as much. All right, so you know, I think that's a good job. I think that's a really good job. You know, this becomes a new um, exit right now. When this guy steps away, and this is one of the things you see a lot at the high school level, is that this guy will stop right here. What you really need is to re-defend that guy because of, because of all that help that these guys were giving. You know, you're vulnerable here for skips. And if you don't have ball pressure here, you know, this guy's exposed, you know. So when he steps away, you gotta re-defend that guy. So you hear the term re-defend a lot. That means you gotta get out there and guard that guy. You can't just be like, oh, I did my job. He didn't score on that initial dodge. I did my job. No, when that guy steps away, particularly he's a yard above GLA, down, you know, close to the goal, you got to regard that guy. So quick, quick movement. And now you got, you know, new exits and new entries, right? You got to exit. He's got to go right here, right? Remember, he was just down right here. He came down to support. Now he's got this long approach. Right, we talked about two-part approaches earlier, right? First part, and now the second part that can meet the ball. And now you need his exit and entry. All of this becomes really important. All the same things, all the same things that we talked about on the initial dodge. Ball spins, spins again. So I think you saw a little bit of that, a little bit of everything. Um, and, and it really isn't that complex. I think being able to articulate it to your guys, and I've said this, I think, on nearly every webinar that I've done is, you know, the difference between good defense and, and great defense is about the size of your laptop's screen. I mean, you think about that as a skip lane or finishing an approach or the uh, uh, head of a stick being on a glove versus being off to the side. And, and I like always asking myself the question is, all right, why did something happen? Was it a great play by your opponent? And more often, it's usually a combination of good plays by your opponent, as well as, um, you know, mistakes that are, that are added up. Um, oh, there's some que a question that popped up. Let's see if I can grab this. Are you okay that the defender turns back on his man before approach in the beginning, before he exits to cover? Uh, I think it's the the clip where, where the ball was being thrown through X. This message from David. Um, I think the ball was spinning through X. Yes, I don't. At some point, you're going to have to turn your back, but you're going to want to make sure you you pivot and swing really aggressively so you can again create that triangle, find the ball, find your man, have a, have an awareness of what your um, what your role is now. And the second question from Matt was just to be thought to have your butt to the dodger and the sideline. I'm guessing you do not subscribe to that. There's, there's two different schools of thought. I like, you know, the, uh, when you're, the, I guess I noticed there's, there used to be a thought to have your butt to the dodge and the sideline, I'm guessing. I'm not sure whether that's an on-ball question or an off-ball 
question. On ball, I like to square up, regardless of how long you approach. I like I don't like channeling. I like challenging somebody, but it's probably typically facing right toward the, to the goal. As far as an off ball stance, when you're in the slide guy, when you're in the slide roll and it's coming down an alley, uh, it's typically facing the end line and maybe the corner of the field of the dodge side that you're dodging. If I don't answer that question, drop me an email and I'll, and I'll get with you privately. All right, here's, a, here's another clip, ball's moving. And again, another two-part approach, right? He was here and now, you know, first part, Second part, you know, might be three part if the guy's really high here. So sometimes you can have these three part approaches. And what, again, what I'm looking for is as the ball moves, how are you moving? Are you pulling down to help? Are you pulling in to help? Are you creating sideways where you can create those triangles that I, that I outlined in the earlier clip? You know, do we have a side, sideways presentation here, sideways presentation there? I want to see, I want to be able to pause the film consistently and being able to say, that's good, that's good, need to do this, need to do that. You can do that for each second if you want. If you really want to get down to the granular level of, of, of coaching really good on-ball and off-ball defense. So here comes a dodge, right? This guy never finished his. If you remember on the earlier clip, he ran out and got ball pressure right away. I'm not a big fan of the back pedal because as this guy's running at you and you're back pedaling, if he starts his dodge, I don't think your hands um, can be ready. So there's some good stuff going on here. You're seeing, you know, a good tri triangle being created here. You know, we don't, you know, this is a freshman. He's got his back turned, which, you know, that's not good, you know, because what that means is, is that, you know, you're fixated on this and the dodge is being taken there. It means you're basically out of the play. So that's not a great job. He's not sideways and now he's swinging around he finally gets to his his spot and as a result on this throwback you're talking about you know again this is actually not a freshman um you know he was just turning his back worried about these two guys and i'm not a big fan about worrying about guys who are this far away when the ball is right here so and you see a lot of teams doing this the, the corner dodge and a pop you know, trying to determine, all right, how are you sliding? You know, are you sliding adjacently? Are you sliding from here? Are you pulling one of these guys in to be your slide guy? So, you know, running action like that is partly it's for the offense to figure out how you're playing their dodges, but also to screw up roles and responsibilities. But remember, this guy turned his back. And as a result, he's got this massive exit right now. And again, against teams, a lot of teams like to put a big shooter in this pop. He's catching the ball. He's catching the ball at 19 right here. And so, you know, against a lot of teams, this guy could be hammering this thing at 13 before you even get there. So that's the price of, of the footwork that this guy was doing earlier, right? So I'm not a huge fan of, in general, of this chase back. I know a lot of teams do. Like that's a long way for me, but a lot of teams play that way, and 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 we do chase back. Don't get me wrong, but that sometimes that's driven by that's driven by communication and opponent, and how much do we have to help on this dodge? But again, look at this, that's a tough approach. And 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 when you start thinking about exits and entries, like you have to practice this movement. Like there's no, you know, do you have a lot of nine yard? threatening approaches in a game, you know, probably a handful. But they're, they're, they're also the best opportunities to draw slides and to shoot and to hitch for the offense uh, right here. And so when you're doing maybe some of your approach drills, you know, and you're, you know, because everybody does some sort of like triangle drill, we call it 32 lunch pail. And you have a defenseman here and a defenseman here and an offensive guys on the, on the, tips of the triangle. When you do this, the key is maybe is to make it a funky looking triangle, make, make this maybe five yards and make this 10 yards and you make maybe this three yards. So that way you get, you get practice on approaching three different kinds of uh, length of approaches. 
So he's got to now make this approach. And now every exit becomes critical right now because when this guy caught the ball, all heads and all eyes turned to this because the guy was catching the ball cleanly at 17 yards. So again, another approach, another difficult approach. This one's, you know, six or seven yards. And what you're looking for is who's creating triangles? Who's creating triangles with the ball? What's my, side, what's my sideways stance? Am I squared up where a guy can play to the back of my head? And this guy becomes really critical. He's got to get down in here. He can help the inside. He can see his man. He can create that triangle. All this stuff, really simple, really basic. And, and one of the things I hate, you know, you know, that's not really, I, I'm looking for plants. This guy right here didn't really do a hard plant. I like the concept of a hard plant. That means whatever foot was closer to the man that you made a, an approach on, that's a hard plant. And then where am I pushing off to? Where I can create the triangle, right? Can I do multiple things, right? I've exited. I can see the ball. I can see my man. But can I get down here and support if I have to? Can I be down in here into a skip lane if I have to? So you're trying to get to be able to, you know, from an off-ball defensive stand, how many things can I do? That should be a question that you're asking your players sometimes if you're at practice, you're watching film. How many things are you doing right now? And if they can't name, you know, the third one, it means you're just going to be, you know, just okay um, as an off-ball team. But if you can say three and you're communicating – then you have a chance to have a really good team defense, All right? So this guy, another guy who pulls himself out, out, out of this approach, and now no hands on him. Remember the first dodge clip we showed you had the guy right on him, and he got a piece of him. When you're in this situation, this is a guy who can get beat in both directions, which I know I'm okay with, but I'm really okay with it if this was more confrontational. This was more of a violent – Thing. And now, if he beats me here, I can see it. If he beats me here, I can see it. By pulling up and not guarding him and, and, and going to have to lunge with his hands, you better hope he hits this guy in the shoulder. And so what I, what I tell my defenseman, and let's, let's talk about defenseman one here, and defenseman two here, because these are two potential slide guys, is you have to see what this confrontation looks like. If he never touches him, doesn't mean you're flying and sliding, but you're much ready. And then you take that at another level, that if you're him, and again, this guy's had a great exit, and now he's entering into the crease. You can see him. He's looking at his guy here, and he's looking at this dodge. When he, I want to expect him to know that this wasn't great contact, because if he knows it and they know it, you got a chance to support the crease which is kind of what you want to do, right? So he gets here, right? Gets down the alley. I don't necessarily love this slide. He's squared up. He doesn't take, he doesn't stay sideways. And now he's in a sprint at him. I don't love it, but I get why he's doing it. And, and when you start thinking about entering the crease or entering your off ball roll, you have a couple of things going on. You can see. He, this guy right here, realizes this guy is sliding. And now he doesn't have to stay right here. And now he's going back to his man. But what I really like to see is maybe a little bit more support there. A little bit more support there. Make this guy make a great play. A rollback, throwback, or a deep carry. Skip. So let's make that guy make the great play. Not that it can't be made, but it's better than giving up this crease look right here. And again, we need him here. And he's not, because he's a little more focused on this guy. So you can see the price. And as a result, this guy's going to feed the crease here. And just a little bit high. But the combination of him recovering, remember, this was... This was, this is a different kind of exit. He was here, thought he had to slide, and now he had to come back. You have to practice that footwork where I think I'm the slide guy and then I pull out of it. And you do it from a sideways stance 
and you do it really balanced with your footwork because that's the difference between this pass being caught and, and you having an ability to come back there and get it. All right, so they're able to survive that. A um, couple of questions came in. Wing dodge, what's the rule? Match feet or prevent top side? And, I, you, know, you know, so wing dodge, you know, would be a guy dodging, say this ball came through, you know, kind of in this area. It can be lower near G GLE, it can be kind of a high corner dodge. Low GLE dodge. So the, you know these wing dodges are usually from these two, three, two or three spots. You know the the question was what, what's what's the rule? And the rule rule is whatever you know you like to coach. You know if you're a team that doesn't like to slide because you have the really good on ball defenders, then um, you know you're probably squared up and more straight up. If you don't mind sliding, then you're probably trying to force them down more GLE and make them come underneath and score. So it really, it's really a function of your defensive philosophy and mentality, as well as kind of your ability to cover people. Um, um, so one of the last questions that came in was, uh, is on this, on this alley dodge, you know, what's the responsibility of this defender right here? Again, he's in a really good stance. He's creating his triangle. Flat triangle. More like a flying saucer. Um, but what's his job? And again, I think it varies by team. Well, you know, I prefer to have my guys, if they were here, to maybe be on this far pipe, because I like the fact that they can, they can support up here. They can support a, a crease, you know, a skip through. Uh, but most teams, I think, like to hedge up and chase back. And I think, I, I think that works in high school. And I think it works in college as well. But it only works to the point where this guy allows it to happen, this attackman. You know, you try to teach your guys to move or sneak. Don't let this guy have both. Right now, he has both things. He can kill space and chase back. So talking about being able to do multiple things, this guy right here is allowing him to do multiple things. So I think the two schools of thought are he tries to squeeze space and chase back or he becomes your slide guy. Um, and again, I think that varies by, I think that varies by guy. I think we got, uh, let me see. Let's see if we have another, uh, another club here. Oh, did we do this one right? I think so. All right. So we'll focus on this one here. You know, high dodge, kind of almost like a almost like a 40 set guy popping behind. And and you get a, and you get a slide, right? And so he's worried about getting beat. He's sliding to a guy at 16 yards, which you can debate whether that's a good thing or not. Now, now you're looking thinking about the exit as this guy right here, I was on the ball, and now I have to recover. And you want to see that being done athletically, with urgency, and without panicking. On this approach, this, you know, this guy's exiting. This guy right here was exiting his, slide, his crease roll and coming in here and making that approach. So that's a different kind of approach, different kind of footwork. You want to see how that is done, right? So this guy recovers, and I like how he comes down here. He gets to his guy and he gets to, to a stance. This guy, remember, this guy right here was just on the ball. So let's watch that. He gets beat, right? You see the three people, right? I really like that this guy, and, and I talk to my, or my guys about this all the time, like the dodge is coming this way, right? And your guy is going that way. You should either sit or move in the opposite direction. Because the longer this guy carries, the harder that pass is. So you want to work opposite of what your if your man is popping behind the ball, stay in your stay in your role. And this allows him to support here if he has to. You know, so you get double benefit there. So you see an exit and an entry, and watch this guy, because I think he does a good job. Comes in here, and he doesn't necessarily have to run to him, but the fact that he does. You know, maybe he's worried about this ball being fed to the crease because he doesn't see any 
support from his other defensemen. They're too far away. This becomes really important. So this guy exits, remember, he exited his role as the slide guy. And his whole job is, when you're the slide guy, you can't get run by two. Now, you can't be so passive that the guy has his hands in his eyes, but you can't be so aggressive that you're whacking the hell out of him and he runs by you too. So you got to find that balance and you have to demonstrate it. You have to teach your guys how to do it. You know, what is the right amount of ball pressure? Is it a poke? Is it a lift? Some people, t you know, teach the big slap check. I, I happen to not be a fan of that, but there's, everybody does it a little bit differently. Your job when you're this circle defender is to buy time for this guy's exit from being on ball. You know, this guy was on ball. You got to buy him time. He's got to get five yards and then get into a stance. So critical. So when you're here, just get, you know, make this guy turn his back. Maybe you make him turn a few times. That's just enough time for, for everybody to get into their optimal role. All right, so he gets there. And because of the ball pressure, you know, look where he is now. He went right from being on the ball. And now he's potentially your slide guy. This is a really good job here. Watch this guy's exit right here. Man, he was just right here as this guy ran away from the ball pressure. And let's see where he gets to. I mean, that's, you know, I don't like the fact that he's turning his back because this guy could potentially, you know, cut right behind him, right, and cut right into that space. I don't like the fact that he's turning his back. I want that to be more of a sideways run where I'm looking back where I'm leaving and I'm sneaking the peak where I'm going back and forth, but you got to love the effort. I mean, the ball just got over there and he's all the way down. And that's what I like to talk about outworking your man. Remember, they were just together. They were just right next to each other. And now because of just effort and toughness and a dedication and a commitment to what you're teaching, guy just outworked him by 11 yards. And, and, and to me, that becomes everything because right now this guy is doing a great job of supporting. You know, he's outworked everybody else. You know, this guy should be in a little bit more. This guy is now your slide guy as a crease sliding team. You know, but I love that effort. I think that's a great example of a slide exit, right, into an entry, into your exiting your man, entering, entering into an off-ball role. I just, I think that's, you know, I think that's spectacular. All right, so now you got to swing around. Now you got, you know, another long approach. We've talked about this here, right? So I think, you know, we got, we got a couple of minutes for some questions before we go into the, uh, um, Recruiting uh, part, let's see, a couple of questions came up in the thing. Um, can you speak to the responsibilities of the D-man on the goalpost? So I answered that, uh, I think I answered that question. Uh, I'm not sure if any other questions came through. Oh, yeah, you know, we'll go to it in a minute. So we're gonna go to the uh, uh, two drills that we do. Um, and let me, let me set this up by saying that we, we took, um, we took, we filmed from the top of Harvard Stadium, which is pretty massive. And so just to, to kind of highlight the guy doing the drill a little bit more, we kind of zoomed in and screen captured this. I, you know, I know there was probably better film clarity on the Kennedy assassination, uh, but that is actually a Harvard defenseman right there in front of the goal. And, uh, and this is a drill that I think I've talked about a few times. I may have shown in an earlier thing. And I think you'll see some of how it's connected to how it's connected to um, you know, the things that we were showing in the earlier clips. So we, we do this drill as a, as a solo version and as a group. So here's a solo example. And, and what we're trying to, what we're, what we're manufacturing here is that you know, he's, a, he's, he's an interior defenseman and he, we want him to hit all four kind of quadrants. You know, so here, you know, he's evaluating, you know, maybe a dodge coming from here or a dodge coming from, you know. And then he's going to move into this quadrant and now he's evaluating an alley dodge or a corner dodge. And this could be, a, you know, and now he's evaluating a sweep or an alley dodge. And then over four here is another dodge from X. So he goes through these four quadrants in a 
you know, maybe a 10 or 15 second rep. So you can see him moving. You can, you know, even in the grainy NFL films, uh, this is not a 1940s football game from Harvard Stadium. It's actually a, a film from practice. But you can see his head turn, right? You can see his head turning. He's trying to think, he's making an approach on an alley. He's exiting into a new role. He's, you know, he's, he's moving. It's a sweep. He slides. He thinks he has to slide and doesn't. It's a deep carry. He goes into a deep carry. So I think you saw, you know, I'm going to show that again because it was quick. But I think you can see some of the footwork we saw when guys had to make slides, when they made half slides and didn't go, when they actually slid, when they thought it was going to be an alley dodge and it became a sweep. So we'll have everyone, all 15 to 20 of our defensemen and D-middies, in one big area in the field, all doing this simultaneously. So you can see the footwork that's required to do it. He slides, he recovers, now he's watching another dodge. You can see how he pivot. You can see how his, you know, I don't, there's nobody in this drill, but I know if I go back here, right? So I, he just recovered and now he's in here, right? He thinks it, I don't even have to know. This is him looking at an alley dodge and then it, it became a sweep. Just watch him, you can tell. Right? That plant that went from here, that might have been a that might have been a guy doing a drill, doing a dodge, came here, and then he rolled out to the, you know, he rolled out to the middle of the field. So he, he was thinking there, and then he had to think there. And that takes a footwork and a choreography that you have to practice. Um, we also do this as a group. So as soon as this one ends, he ends, you know, so you hit all four quadrants. And so here's, here's, here's a version where we do it. This is from uh, March, I think, uh, right before our season ended. And we have the whole, all the guys out. And I typically like to do this as a group of, of four. And I don't know if I, I know we might've had less guys, but you can hear, here's one guy, here's another guy. All right, here's another guy. Here's another guy. So let's call that let's call that a group of four. I don't know if that is the group of four, but all right. And they got this whole front of the goal. And so he's he's looking at an alley dodge. He's looking at a dodge from GLA. He's looking at a dodge from GLA. You know, and so he's looking at an alley dodge. And so you're practicing. You can see it. I think once we get going, you can see the guys as a group moving and practicing getting into their roles and swinging and pivoting. Their heads are turning, right? And I'm, you know, I'm in here, I get to do quality control. I get to look at all these guys all at the same time. And, you know, I'll bring them in and we'll focus on, hey, I wanna see a little bit more head turn, or I don't like the hard plants that you're making. I want your feet to brush the ground so that you can plant and not have your weight shift too much. So let's 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 go back and watch because I think you can see some guys pick one guy and you'll see his head turn, maybe some hard plants. They'll turn and swivel, right? They'll turn and open up, right? They're I'm I'm just trying to mimic these movements that they're going to have to make in a game over and over again. By doing this well, you can you, you can exit and make an approach on a guy. You can exit and make good slide decisions. You can leave your man and enter an off ball role athletically. You're teaching your guys how their chest, how it wants to be oriented to the area that they're going to support and how it is relative to the man that they're leaving. So, you, you know, just by doing these simple drills, you're building the mentality of your guys on what matters. And, you know, the, the bottom line is, you know, teaching your guys that nobody really cares how many checks, great checks you threw. All it matters is whether you got the stop or not. It's totally binary. And, and if you care about the stop, what really matters is how all six of those guys integrate uh, together. Uh, a couple of questions uh, coming in. Uh, uh, my, my high school teammate, John Layden, little John Layden shout out. He asked me if my favorite deli and Levittown, uh, where I grew up, is delivering. Unfortunately, the deli went out of, of, of business, but before it ended, uh, a good friend of mine, uh, 
Mike Winkoff had a sandwich named after me, you know. Um, so no, unfortunately, not a lot of good delis and not as good as Long Island, that's for sure. Uh, Steve Moreland, my college teammate, um, had a question. Uh, is the coach calling out the location of the Dodger and the type of Dodge? That's an unbelievable question. So when we do this, we will customize this to our opponent. If we, have, if we, if we play against a lot of teams that like to sweep, we'll, or we'll do the drill with that. We, if we're playing against teams that, that swim a lot, we'll practice the swim. We will, you know, we'll have an upperclassman in each of the, four, the groups of four, three to four people say, all right, this first time we're going to do it, the guy's going to, you know, the imaginary guy, because remember, it's imaginary Dodger. He's going to swim and roll and pump and then go all in. So you got to, you got to, you know, you got to visualize the swim. Guy comes out of the roll, he throws a fake throwback and then goes to the goal. So you're, at, you're, you're having your guys, even though they're not physically looking at an actual Dodger, that they have to visualize it. And then when, they, when we start doing it with live people, now we've gotten visualization and physical reps. So that's, that's a great question. We'll, we'll customize that to our opponent and some of the dodges we're going to see. And we'll also customize it and give leadership responsibilities, you know, uh, to upperclassmen. But then when you get later in the year, I think, I think what critical thing is, is developing future leaders. And if you want to test whether your freshmen and sophomores have mastered your language, have them run a drill and then have your upperclassmen critique them. Because what you're trying to perpetuate is every year you graduate a quarter of your team, you know, if, if you're not developing the guys underneath them, losing a quarter of your team is, you know, is crushing, but not if you, you're developing leadership and developing mastery of these, these concepts as you go along. So um, why don't we go right into the, uh, into the recruiting uh, part, if that's, uh, if that's good, you can put me up on screen. 